Okay, so we'll keep going and we'll talk about the heart itself. So if you look at this heart, um, so there's the superior vena cava. Okay, so this is bringing unoxygenated blood from the head and upper extremities. Okay, then we have the inferior vena cava that's bringing unoxygenated blood from the lower extremities. And they will both empty into what we call the first chamber, the right atrium. Now you also have a coronary sinus, which is right here, which is bringing back unoxygenated blood from the heart itself. Remember the heart has its own blood supply. So the coronary sinus is bringing that back right here. So you have three things that actually dump into the right atrium, the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and the coronary sinus. So this blue blood, we, well, we need to find a way to make it red. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the first valve, which is the right tricuspid uh, or the right AV valve. And you have these structures that are called chordae tendinae, which attach to these papillary muscles to make sure the valve is here. And then when it fills up with blood, it stays anchored down here. It doesn't want to go backwards, right? So if you're out in the rain and the umbrella, you know, goes this way, well, we don't want the valves to go that way. So these anchors, these uh, chordae tendinae, uh, along with the papillary muscle, will prevent the valve from going the wrong direction. So the blood comes in here, here it fills up, fills up, fills up. Now mind you, the right and the left side it fill up at the same time, but uh, it doesn't go right and then left. It, everything is happening simultaneously, but I'm just taking you through step by step. So then this blood is going to say, okay, I need to take this blue blood, go through the pulmonary valve, go through the pulmonary trunk, pulmonary arteries right and left into the lungs. And the purpose of the lungs are to, like we talked about, is take that blue blood, which is full of carbon dioxide, and then fill it with oxygen. And then we're going to bring it back via the left eight, uh, pulmonary veins and the right pulmonary veins into the left atrium. Then it's going to go through a valve that has three names, the mitral valve, bicuspid valve, or the left AV valve. And remember, the right has tricuspid. It had three flaps and the left only has two flaps so it's called the bicuspid and if you look at this myocardium on the left is much thicker because the job of the left ventricle is to pump blood through the rest of your body whereas the right ventricle is only going to pump it to your lungs so the left ventricle is a lot thicker and stronger now what's going to happen is we're going to get the left ventricle to contract and it's going to go through the aortic valve which is back here then it's going to go through the aorta it has these three branches that come off which we'll discuss in a little bit um, but the brachiocephalic the left common carotid and the left subclavian okay and then it goes down through the thoracic and then the abdominal aorta okay so here's the right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle these are the little anchors that are the chordae tendinae. These are the papillary muscles. Here's the interventricular septum. Okay. And I think we covered it all. So going back, the heart has four chambers. Uh, the two upper chambers called the atria. Those are the receiving chambers. And then we have two, uh, I don't know where it put me here, <laughs> and two lower chambers called ventricles. The atria receive blood returning to the heart, have thin walls and ear-like oracles. Um, remember I mentioned in the other video, oracles will help expand the atrium in case it gets a sudden gush of blood and it can help fill up the atrium because the atrium are small, so it can help to expand and fill, hold more blood. The thick muscle ventricles pump blood out of the heart, so those are our pumping chambers. A septum, just like your nasal septum, but you have an interventricular septum um, that separates the atrium and the ventricle on the right from those on the left. Uh, each side has an atrioventricular valve to ensure one-way flow of the blood from the... Remember, I was telling you, the blood comes in and it's a one-way valve. If it fills up, it shuts. It doesn't want to go backwards. The right tricuspid valve and the left bicuspid valve have cusps to which the chordae tendinae attach. Chordae tendinae are attached to the papillary muscles in the inner wall of the heart, and these muscles contract during ventricular contraction to prevent backflow of the blood. So, 
we discussed the inferior vena cava as bringing blue blood back from the cystic circuit and to the right atrium okay um, and the superior vena cava is head and upper extremities inferior vena cava is lower extremities and the abdomen uh, the coronary sinus uh, drains blood from the myocardium, uh, which is the heart's own blood supply. Now, while we're at it, remember a heart attack is when the blood supply to the heart is compromised. A stroke is when the blood supply to the brain is compromised. The right ventricle has a thinner wall and the left, and the left has a thicker wall because the right ventricle is only pumping to the lungs compared to the left, which is pumping to the entire body. Uh, each side of the heart has a semilunar valve between the ventricle and a great vessel. Um, so the right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs through the pulmonary trunk. At the base of the pulmonary trunk is the pulmonary semilunar valve, which prevents backflow. So all these valves will prevent backflow. And then the left ventricle pumps blood into the systemic circuit through the aorta. And from the left ventricle, it has to go through this aortic semilunar valve, which prevents backflow blood into the left ventricle. Now, let's say that I had a patient and they had the valve was faulty. So the blood was accumulating in the lower extremities, right? So if it was accumulating in the lower extremities, that, that tells me that because the job of the superior inferior vena cava, and especially the inferior vena cava, is to drain the lower extremity, if the right ventricle is not pumping the way it should, then the fluid or the blood is going to back up in the lower extremities. Now, if my right and left ventricle is not pumping as hard as it should, now remember, I just got all this fresh blood from the lungs. Well, if the left ventricle can't pump that blood back into the system, then the fluid can back up into the lungs. So then we have uh, fluid in the lungs. So similarly, we can kind of see, okay, where where is the uh, disconnect? Okay, so again, if a patient has a right ventricular uh, um atrophy or dysfunction most likely you're going to see accumulation of fluid in the legs and if a patient has left ventricular atrophy or dysfunction then what's going to happen is the fluid can back up into the lungs so there's that diagram that i was teaching you again so if this is not working well well, all the fluid that came from superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, well, it's going to back up here. So it's going to back up into the lower extremities, usually because of gravity. Now, if my left ventricle can't pump blood out of there because it's weak or damaged or whatever the case may be, well, the blood that came from the lungs, it's going to back up, back up, so you have more fluid in the lungs. Now, let's talk about the lub dub, lub dub. Okay, so the lub the sound of the heart when you listen to your heart it goes lub dub lub dub and the number one thing you want to uh, understand is the first closing of these valves the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve they close together that's our lub okay so it's always the closing of the valves that make that sound then the second sound is when the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve close together so it should be a clean lub dub lub dub. So what that means is both of those valves, the tricuspid and mitral valve, are closing at the same time, boom, lub, and then the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve close at the same time, dub. So it's a clean lub dub, lub dub. So when you go to the doctor and they're listening to your heart sounds, they're listening for, is there a clear lub dub, lub dub, boom, 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 boom. But if they hear lub dub, shh, lub dub, shh, well, then they can say, well, one of the valves isn't working. Or they don't even hear it. They just hear a, hear a lub. There was no lub dub. Um, so again, the first part of recognizing that there's something wrong with the heart is listening to the heart sounds. Okay, And that doesn't necessarily tell you exactly what's wrong, but it can say, okay, well, let's order a few more tests. Let's order... Uh, echocardiogram let's order EKG let's order something else and see if it's where it's coming from now remember EKG which I'll discuss a little bit later is measuring the electrical activity of the heart okay whereas here this is the blood flow to the heart so if somebody has a heart attack 
that is the blood flow to the heart is compromised. If somebody has a cardiac arrest, okay, that means the electrical activity is compromised. Okay, so again, we'll discuss this a little bit later. But looking at this, so the tricuspid valve, oh, what's going on here? All right. The tricuspid valve um, is the opening between the right atrium and right ventricle. Prevents blood flow from moving from the right ventricle and back into the right uh, atrium. So this is the lub. The pulmonary valve is the entrance to the pulmonary trunk. The mitral valve is found between the left atrium and the left ventricle. And the aortic valve is the entrance to the aorta. So it's basically the aortic valve separates the left ventricle to the aorta. Here are the valves, again, tricuspid, meaning three flaps, and the bicuspid. Now, a patient can have a, a, a mechanical valve here, or a pig valve if they need to replace this, and they do fairly well. The, there's pros and cons to each one. A mechanical valve, they will have to take blood thinners for an extended period of time. And with the pig valve, you run the risk of uh, rejection, but they don't have to take uh, blood thinners as long. So it's kind of, uh, you know, preference from the surgeon, uh, discuss it with the patient, uh, the pros and cons of everything. Just like ACL, right? You can get a patellar tendon, you can get a hamstring or a cadaver, and there's pros and cons to each type of surgery. Uh, all surgery is risky, but um, with the latest technology, most patients do really, really well. Okay, the skeleton of the heart. So if you look at the outside of the heart, it's rings of dense connective tissue uh, surround the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. They provide attachments for the heart valves and muscle fibers. Uh, these tough rings prevent dilation of outlets of the atria and ventricles. And the true skeleton of the heart are fibrous rings plus dense connective tissue uh, in the interventricular septum. Now also, if you look at the myocardium, the, the, the heart is kind of like a circular shape in a sense that you ever wring out a towel? You know, when you wring out a towel, you kind of get that last bit out. So if you look at the myocardium and the, sh and the layers in the heart, it's, it's not just a straight layer. It's, it's actually circular. So it, when, it, when it pumps, it, it's almost like a ringing action. So it can squeeze out the heart, uh, the squeeze out the blood. So it's like this ringing action. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, uh, blood flow to the heart, as we uh, discuss, there's two circuits, uh, the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. So the pulmonary circuit is blood flow between the heart and lungs, and the systemic circuit is blood flow between the heart and blood tissues. You're like, whoa, what's going on here? So <laughs> again, the, the, the blood flow through the heart is oxygen-poor blood returns to the right atrium via the vena cava, superior inferior, and the coronary sinus. The right atrium contracts, forcing blood through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. The right ventricle contracts, closing the tricuspid valve and forcing blood through the pulmonary seminary valve into the pulmonary trunk and arteries. Remember, in, in the heart, these arteries are blue. It's the exception. The pulmonary arteries carry blood to the lungs, where it enters the alveolar capillaries. Um, alveolar capillaries are are the site of gas exchange with the alveoli of the lungs. Here the blood drops off carbon dioxide and picks up oxygen. So it's converting that blue blood to nice red blood. Oxygen-rich blood flows back to the left atrium of the heart via pulmonary veins. Remember, that's the exception. The left atrium pumps blood through the mitral valve into the left ventricle, and the left ventricle contracts, closing the mitral valve, opening the aortic semilunar valve, and pumping blood into the aorta. Now, if you've heard of murmurs, right, like a heart murmur, sometimes a murmur, the definition of murmur is an abnormal sound. And a lot of times, patients will have uh, a murmur at the mitral valve. Maybe it doesn't close all the way or there's this click. Um, doesn't always necessarily mean that there's pathology, but if it is present, then we can order more tests and say, okay, wait a second. I didn't hear a nice lub-dub, lub-dub. Uh, maybe there was a click or maybe you heard a, you heard a lub-dub shh. And that means that maybe the valve isn't closing all the way. Uh, there's this diagram again um, that we had discussed in the other videos. So you can take a look at this again. The blue blood is coming from the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, going into the right atrium, 
through the valves, right ventricle, through the pulmonary trunk, pulmonary arteries, the lungs will oxygenate it, return via pulmonary veins into the left atrium, through the mitral valve, left ventricle, left ventricle pumps it through the aortic valve, through the aorta, aorta will send it to different parts of the body and tissues, the upper extremity and the lower extremity. Here is a nice little layout uh, of where the blood is going. The blue is obviously unoxygenated and this is oxygenated. Okay, so here's the systemic circuit and then here's the pulmonary circuit. So as I mentioned, the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and the coronary sinus are dumping blue blood, first of all, into the right atrium. Then it's going to go through the tricuspid valve or right AV valve, right ventricle, pulmonary valve, pulmonary trunk will split into the left and right pulmonary arteries. You have alveolar capillaries in the right lung. Now all of a sudden you're going to take, pick up that carbon dioxide and then exchange it with the oxygen. And now we return via the right and left pulmonary veins. Now we have red blood. Then it goes into the left atrium, through the mitral valve, through the left ventricle, through the aortic valve, and then the aorta. And then the aorta is going to send blood through the upper, lower, and of course it's going to give its own heart um, blood supply too. Okay, so hopefully you can understand that. Um, you might be able, if you can trace it, I have that worksheet uh, on Canvas. If you can go through that worksheet, this is a, a good practice for you. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, the blood supply to the heart itself, you have uh, right and left coronary arteries, which are the first branches that come off the aorta before it goes through the aortic arch, which carry oxygen-rich blood to the heart. Uh, blood flow increases during relaxation of the ventricles because myocardial vessels are not compressed at this time. Due to the constant pumping action of the heart, cardiac muscle cells require a continuous supply of oxygen. That means it, no it needs its own blood supply. Uh, branch of the coronary arteries feed many capillaries of the myocardium. Branches of the coronary arteries often have con connections called anastomosis. These provide alternate pathways for blood in case a pathway becomes blocked. Um, you've heard of patients that have had bypass surgery, uh, right? So if they have a bypass surgery, they're going to have to bypass a certain uh, uh, blood vessel because it was blocked. Cardiac veins drain blood from the heart muscle and carry it to the coronary sinus, a large vein that empties into the right atrium. So again, the heart has its own blood supply. And the first branch off that aorta are the right and left coronary arteries, which supply oxygen-rich blood to the heart itself. A heart attack is when the blood supply to the heart is compromised via plaque atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries. Okay. And those are the openings. Okay, so there's the aorta. And then the right coronary artery in the opening of the left coronary artery. Okay, so sending blood supply to the heart itself. There it is here. Now take a look at this right here. So remember, these arteries come off the aorta, and this right here, called the left anterior descending artery, has an interesting nickname, and this is called the widow maker. Okay, so this is called the widow maker. And you know what a widow is. Unfortunately, they've lost their spouse. So you can see the damage to this area right here, which supplies a major section of the heart. If this is compromised, then it's going to do some serious damage to the heart. And if the heart doesn't have blood supply, then how can it exchange blue blood for red blood and get it to the rest of the body? Okay. So these are all the blood supplies, surface blood vessels, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. Uh, you have a small cardiac vein here. You have the left anterior descending. We call it the left a, uh, uh, LAD. Okay, the left ventricle. Here's the apex. Now here, here's the widow maker. So if that is compromised right here, then the blood supply to the heart is compromised, and that is what a definition of a heart attack is. Okay, all right.